we just clean this? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I woke up this morning and it was pouring with rain. It was wonderful. The only thing I didn't know was how long was it raining for? Because we have had no rain since, what, end of May? <laughs> so I quickly went outside, didn't get drenched because it was really raining hard. And I thought, oh, which orchids can I pull? Which orchids can I pull without getting soaking wet? You know, summer cold risk and all of that stuff. I didn't want it. <laughs> But then, well, here we are. It stopped raining. That was a short stint. Apparently, we're going to get some more in about two hours. But I wanted to take the opportunity and talk to you about why I pulled some orchids and why I didn't. And with that, also give you an update on some of the orchids that I have that I'm not too, let's just say, um, convinced that they're doing well. So thank you for being here. <laughs> it's just been like Groundhog Day, me and cleaning all the time. Just gonna finish this table because this was the major dust that came down with the rain. And now hopefully I'm gonna get some cleaner stuff because yes, I did go around and miss the orchids <laughs> and I'll explain as well why I went gung-ho with fertilizer today. I mean, really gung-ho, even with the telumnias. So if you're so inclined, <laughs> join me. Uh, you're not seeing a repeat video, I promise. <laughs> even though I feel like right now, that is all I've got to offer. Cleaning, cleaning, orchid chores and all that fun stuff. But at least now I can get a better idea to see how dirty the rain will be if it does rain again. This is sort of like my little measure, my margin, how I can figure out how clean the rain is and what I have to do with the orchids that are exposed. That was clean water. And all I did was wipe the table and I missed a spot. <laughs> okay, right. Let me talk to you about what happened this morning. Whoa, geez, Nina. What happened this morning when I saw what I was up against, which was wonderful because my temperatures are 29 degrees and I have 85% humidity. This is the climate I want to grow orchids in 365 days a year. But then we would be climbing trees to observe and watch them grow as opposed to having them in pots, right? Let me show you my thought process today. Here we have a set of vandacious orchids that I have also in Lekka and self-watering, even though they could do really well in lava rock and a basket. But today I am fertilizing with 300 parts per million on aerial roots. A luxury because normally I have to be so tentative with how much fertilizer I attach to my aerial roots because of my dry climate with 85% humidity and a balmy 29 degrees Celsius on the roots that are obviously absorbing water and nutrients. Some new roots don't do that just yet, but this is great for me because not only am I getting the maximum amount of fertilizer into them, I do not have to worry about burning root tips or burning any kind of belayment. So this morning I was like, whoa, this is paradise. And I also chose to specifically pull these orchids, get them out into the rain, because I want those roots to keep growing. And the more humidity they get, the more chance I have, for example, on my Renantanda sunrise, that this one aerial root that is growing beautifully into the pot will actually continue to grow and not frazzle out on me on super dry lecker. Usually when a forecast comes through that says I have extended hours, maybe a full day of rain, I would pull all the pots out of their masks so that they wouldn't flood. Quick update on my fires, recently reported she's still alive. <laughs> and isn't it wonderful that two days later she got a good dose of rain. So this morning I lifted all the pots to check and see how much rain had actually filled the masks and we're okay. The roots of this orchid are higher in the pot than the water touching it. The pot is resting a little bit on the water itself, but that's okay. The roots are nowhere near down there, so we're okay. So that's what I've been doing with also the cymbidium, just to make sure 
that if I didn't know how much rain was coming down, I wasn't flooding the pots and was completely unaware of it, possibly needing to drain them. My dendrobium film is being hammered today by 300 parts per million every time I missed the roots. Other days, I normally go in with 300 parts per million, but then after 30 minutes, I'm right back on top of her with plain RO water to make sure that the roots don't frazzle out, get burnt, and die because of 300 parts per million just resting on the velamen. It's so much fun today. Oh, yikes, that looks a little bit dark. Let's see if we can do something about it just to brighten it up a little bit. Eh, maybe a bit too much. There we go. Tolumnias got a full 300 parts per million today as well. Again, same with the Ophilum. Should I go with 300 parts per million at my Tolumnias, which I did many, many, many years ago and I almost killed them all? Of course, the breeze, the warmth, the dry air would also kill those roots. Uh, trust me, I know. I almost decimated my entire Tolumnia collection in doing so. But today, 300 parts per million, and then I didn't have to worry about anything beyond that. And after an hour, I went back and missed it with plain RO water. <laughs> Ooh, so excited, I tell you. The little difference humidity makes in my general makeup. I'm loving this day. Even though the sun isn't shining, it's about the humidity. It's a rarity and I am really, really, like I said, going all ninja on the fertilizer front on a day like this. Same with all the mounts that are up here to the right. Fine rooted and all of that. I didn't get to put the Victoria Regina out in time. So these have all gotten 300 parts per million as well. The same rhythm as with the Tolumnias. They've already been flushed with plain RO water. Now this little table will be all Rapiculus Lelias moving forward as and when the afternoon sun isn't pounding down too harshly on this table but they will get a lot of light. But this morning, I quickly pulled my Cattleya Schilleriana. We haven't seen this orchid in a long, long time, but here she is doing pretty well. She has grown three new growths of the season, just making sure that there isn't scale, because this orchid has always dealt with scale and, well, thanks to garlic alcohol, we are done and dusted. But you know, we're always a little bit apprehensive on a specific orchid that had scale issues for the longest time. Anyway, I pulled her out because I wanted her to get a good flush. She is somewhat neglected, neglected in adverted commas, but in the corner of my blooming alley, just waiting to get her to mature size so that she would bloom. That is why she's out here and I could also mist her with 300 parts per million and let the rain do the rest for me. The same goes for my Calarthrum biconutum. This one I got from the orchid room, growing a new growth, and these new roots need to go into the pot. I cannot have these roots going everywhere but down. So I'm hoping that with the rain, giving it great humidity with a lot of airflow so that I don't ruin my new growth, that would happen. And well, that's why she's out here. My Lelia Flava was out here anyway. Semi-hydro, perfect. Just let the rain do the thing. And of course, my Neophenicia falcata lives out here until in the afternoon I put her down into a more shady spot, got rained on, the pot didn't fill. This one is outside because here we come to the poorly plants and why, well, one poorly plant and another one I'll show you just now. I am so freaked out about this. Even though I've treated it with garlic alcohol, I'm freaked out about some orchids doing this. And in another video, I will show you a shelf where the whole problem started. And even though I've been on top of it, etc., etc., I'm losing orchids because of whatever is going on here. I would swear that it is thrips. But I can't be for certain. At least, at least for the time being, protected by garlic alcohol, which is another application I'm going to have to make after the rain. I've got this new growth on the millery that is actually clean. But what on earth is going on? I hate it because now let's look at the next one. Dendrobium aurantiflameum. And this is what has happened to it in the season of 2022. I don't have any new growth, but this orchid has pretty much defoliated because of the same signals. 
And these two, the Millery and the Aurantiflammeum, do not live next to each other. But look at what the leaves are doing, have done. This is new growth from this season. And I thought it was clean and whatever, and now it is starting again. I have no idea what is afflicting my orchid leaves. But whatever it is, it's taking out the leaves, defoliating the canes, and leaving me with a little fear and trepidation that these orchids are not going to be around for that much longer. Look, you see that? What on earth is going on? I am, I am baffled and I keep maintaining the garlic alcohol rhythm and all I can think of is thrips. Up until a couple of days ago, all this was clean new growth, all of it. And now it's doing the same thing and you can see the leaves are starting to yellow and eventually they will fall off. Again, no new growth on this one either and that is why I put her out into the rain to see if there's anything, anything at all that I can do about it get her to recover. She has a little side shoot coming here, but that is also showing some signs of the same affliction. Yeah, I'm not happy about this. This came from Michael McCarthy, the orchid room, and Melissa Walker. Don't know what's going on. This orchid was doing so great. Grew two beautiful new growths in the almost two years that I've had it. And then this, oopsie daisy. Maybe you know what it is. And if you don't know what it is, maybe you can share the video, give the person a timestamp and say, can you check the leaves? Because I don't want to lose this orchid. And yeah, anyway, good news, however, is, and that's why she's also standing at the edge of the thing, because I don't want to affect this orchid in the back, which I'm now not going to touch. I have to disinfect my hands, seeing as I don't know what this is. But in the back there is my Briageri, my little Rapiculus Lania that has graduated to the great outdoors because it has been babied for a year inside on the glass shelf while I was waiting for it to recover and root in. And I'm not going to do my tug test, trust me, that orchid is rooted in. So a week ago I brought her outside just to get her acclimated for her permanent living space. We have a graduation here, woohoo! I'm going to go and disinfect my hands and I'll be back. At the time of filming, we are 24 hours later. It's a new morning, it's a new day. These summer blooming Phalaenopsis were put out here yesterday, according to my time frame. And look at how dirty they are. <laughs> and I love it because they got completely rained on. It was amazing. It was amazing. I never ever get to have my summer blooming fowls outside when the temperatures are right while it is raining. Usually, I push the limits of them around late spring when there's still some chill in the air, but it's raining and I know that we won't have much rain for a long, long time. And I push the envelope, put them out, and then I, of course, freak out thinking that I'm going to now lose them just because I wanted them to get rained on. Not today, not today. The masks didn't flood, that was awesome. My leaves are dirty, that's awesome. That means they're fine and they were drenched this morning and now they're all dry. Fabulous. I think I can encourage some root growth while they're here. And maybe you can see the spotting on the terracotta floor because you know what? The rain that I woke up to this morning was not forecast. Now I'm sort of like dubious. They're saying rain at 4 p.m. And I'm like, yeah, right. But look, look, we might be onto something here. More rain. But before it comes down heavily again, I want to show you one more thing. Let's see if I can fit that in. <laughs> Maybe you noticed my blooming alley was somewhat empty. Well, Stan the Man is out here on the west side together with Neostylus Lucneri and its compadre over there, the Lucneri Blue. Yeah, rain on Stanhopias, they love it. And of course, back here, I was also more aggressive with my fertilizer, 300 parts per million, and then able just to leave the nutrients on the Velamen without having to worry. But this is interesting <laughs> to see Stan the man out here. He is so thirsty, his media is dry again, so I am glad that there's a second round of rain coming because I'm going to be putting another 300 parts per million into him right now before any other rain adds to it and flushes that out. Now, you might be wondering, where are your poorly rooting bandas? They are not getting rained on, A, because I don't have space back here, 
but because I'm trying to make sure that I get my rain quality right. If what came down overnight and this morning or whenever, how long it rained, etc., if that was dirty rain, those roots that I'm trying, trying to get through and hopefully branch or the vandas grow new roots, I do not want them to be hit with something that isn't clean. For that reason, last night when I took the laundry down, because I could hear the thunder, I was extremely tempted to bring out those two vandas and say whatever happens, happens. And then on second thoughts, I thought, nope, not going to go there. If I'm making any progress with those vandas, letting them grow, keeping them alive, I don't want to ruin it now with something that I cannot monitor what the quality is until I wake up. Turns out last night it was a lot of hullabaloo up in the skies, a lot of thunder. The air was moving west and it was all concentrated over the Mediterranean. So I wasn't expecting anything. But what a blessing this morning, I cannot tell you. So before it starts getting heavier and I ruin what has so far been a good day and my equipment starts to <laughs> do static sounds, I'm going to just say thank you so much for watching. Quick impromptu video. But oh my goodness, I had to share a special day. I have warm temperatures and super high humidity. And now I'm off to fertilize even more. Happy days. Thank you for watching. Hope you're having a great day as well. On one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.